You are listening to Wealthy Muslim Woman Podcast, episode number 22 with Saima Ali, MD. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you are all doing wonderful, wonderful. I am super excited. I am working on creating this amazing course that will put everything that we talk about in this podcast together. And it'll just be a quick eight week course and you will be able to see everything in one spot and not only see it, but able to practice it in your daily life and see what the results will be. I will do a whole podcast on the course and inshallah I'll talk about it more next week. But in today's episode, I wanted to do a follow-up episode to previous week's uh, podcast, which was on how to find a good husband. And this is for when you are married and when you are in a relationship, how to make things better and uh, how to love your husband. Uh, one thing I missed out on the last week's uh, podcast was a recommendation on getting a prenuptial agreement. That's something that you should definitely look into. It may or may not be helpful because if you get married in one state and then later on end up moving to another state, it may still still work or it may not be upheld by the court in a different state. So that's something that you should look into, but speak with a lawyer and see if getting a prenuptial agreement would be a good, good start with your marriage. Anyways, so today, what is the purpose of your husband? And I've mentioned that I've been working on myself over the last year and a half. And one of the one of the resources that I've used is uh, Brooke Castillo, her podcast and her self-coaching scholars program. And this is where I learned this principle from. And what was uh, so interesting for me was from last week's uh, podcast when we read that verse, the verse on finding a spouse, and it said, and of his sign is that he created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you love and mercy indeed in that you indeed that are signs for people who give thought so the purpose of marriage the purpose of having a husband is so you can have somebody to love and so you can have somebody to show mercy towards and love them love them unconditionally and that's what Brooke Castillo's teaching is that you marry somebody just so you can have someone to love when we get married we come into a marriage with all these expectations all these desires all these needs and when the other person fails to fails to meet our needs and our expectations we end up being very frustrated very angry and just not in a good place emotionally so love is an emotion that we feel. Now, how do we get to feel love? And this is going back to the model that I've spoken about multiple times. Our thoughts create our feelings. And the way we feel love for somebody is because of the thoughts that we have for them. Now, this is very very fascinating we don't love somebody because of what they do for us we don't love somebody of all the expectation that they are meeting for us we just love them because of who they are think about it for our parents for our siblings we just love them for who they are even when they're mad at us or even when they're angry at us we can love them now loving somebody doesn't mean that you have to be in a bad situation if it is abusive and the abuse can be coming from parents as well or from from somebody else around you that doesn't mean that you have to stay there but you can still love somebody you can still love them and put on your own boundary and decide to walk away but you do not need to hate somebody for you to leave or for you to create your own boundaries towards them so love is an emotion, love is a feeling that we feel because of what we are thinking and love happens very consciously. You can think to love somebody. Think about it, if you are unconscious, you are not feeling any happy sadness, you are because you are not thinking any thoughts. There are no thoughts, so thus no feelings are created. So think about it this way, if your husband tells you that he loves you, do you always feel the love? 
Probably not. There may be times when he says he loves you, but you're like, no, you don't because you did not help me with the dishes or you did not take out the garbage. If you loved me, you would do this, you would do that. And we are coming from an unloving place and it's not because of what they are doing or what they are thinking. They may really be loving you at that time, but because of what you are thinking, you are now feeling that love. It's not because of what they did or did not do. So you get to decide how often you want to feel love and you could decide to feel love all the time for anybody, any person in your life. This is a power that you have because of the thoughts that you can think. So you get to decide how you feel, whether you want to feel love or not, not because of an action that he may or may not be taking or the, the, emo the expectations, the manuals you have for them that they may or may not be meeting because they are a different person and you, they are a circumstance in that model. So we have circumstances, things that we cannot change. Then we have our thoughts that we can change. Then we have our feelings that can be changed because of how we feel and we can take actions that we want to take and get results that we want to get. So there are many times when we act out of anger, act out of disrespect. Let's say you feel that your husband is being rude to you or being disrespectful to you, then you may end up reacting the same and being disrespectful to him and being rude to him. Then how is that different and how most importantly how are you feeling when you feel when you feel that anger and the and that rudeness you feel guilty afterward that you should not have acted that way that that's not somebody that you want to be and the good news i have is that you get to act and be and behave the way you want to no matter what anybody else does you have this power in you this is what gives you all the power in the world over how you feel and how you think. Loving someone is actually a very selfish way of living. This is not selfless. This is not like he does not have to meet my expectation and he gets to live his life the way he wants and I still have to love him anyway. This is not selfless. This is selfish because think about how love makes you feel. Think about the last time you were angry and you were hating somebody and how did that make you feel? That probably raised your pulse high that you were not thinking right. You may have yelled, you may have screamed and it, we have, there are multiple medical studies that show that when you are miserable, when you are not happy, when you are living in emotions of anger and hate, that is not good for your health. It does cause heart diseases. It does cause elevated blood pressures and other uh, cortisols going up. This is the steroids that are released from your body causing diabetes and other medical problems. That's what happens when you are in anger and when you are in a hateful mode. Now think about how you felt when you were loving last time. This Your husband did something so awesome, so wonderful you, for you and you, your heart was just filled with love for him. How did you feel at that time? You may have felt content. You may have felt relaxed. You, your pulse probably slowed down and you were able to sleep, see clearly and feel just clearness instead of having this fog over your thoughts. So you can learn to love yourself and you can learn to love your husband. It actually does take practice. This is something that you have to learn to do by changing our thoughts and by changing that leading to changing how we feel. So you need to learn to love yourself and to love others around you for your sake. And this can apply to other relationships as well, your friendships, your your relationships with your siblings, with your parents, you can decide to feel the love and love them for no matter what they do or who they are. They get to be whoever they want to be and you still get to love them. Because 
nobody else will follow the manual that you have for them you may have this dream for your kids or for um, other people around you that they're gonna live this life the way you planned it um, you know they're going to go to college and they're going to get this degree and they are going to do amazing things uh, but think about it they may not that's not the life that they may be fit for or designed to live and that's where unconditional love comes in from that you love them no matter what they do if they turn out that they are going to do drugs i hope my kids don't listen to this when they're older um but you know they get to live their lives that the way that they want to they don't have to follow your manual of how you want to how you want them to live but you still get to feel the love and you still get to love them for who they are and that is an amazing amazing power to have because if you are in a place of uh, hate, you will be in a place of misery. You will not be happy and you will be facing all those negative consequences. So you can decide to love somebody and still decide not to be with them. If this is a relationship between a husband and wife, you can decide to leave because you want to leave, not because the other person is not meeting your expectations and because you do not love them. You get to decide whatever you want to do because that's what you want to do not because you are bonded because of certain society expectations or your own expectations that you may not be able to financially support your kids or other reasons that people come up with but don't lie to yourself that you cannot leave you can leave you can do whatever you want to do but you still get to feel love and loving towards other people and that's that's where you get your power from because if you leave from a place of hate if you leave from a place of misery and you do not work out these emotions and realize that it's only your thoughts that are causing these feelings guess what you will be miserable even after the marriage or wherever you end up you will still find a reason to be miserable and the same thing applies for other things in our lives. If we are not, we think losing weight is going to make us happy, but it is actually our thoughts that we are having that are going to make us happy or think us, make us think in a different way. You can be loving towards yourself, towards your body, even when you do not have the weight that, the goal weight that you want to be. So your happiness and your expectations is what matters for you what your husband does or does not do that's irrelevant or the expectations that you have of him that is irrelevant when i first got married it was very challenging with my husband we are both type a personalities we are the alpha man and the alpha woman we want to be in power we want to be in charge so I wanted him to be this different, this other person, so he could make me happy. And it was the same thing for him. He wanted me to be this other person, meeting all his needs. And then only then we could be happy or uh, make this relationship work. And it was only after I started learning these skills and applying them that we started working on ourselves and our relationship. I'm very lucky in that my husband is very open to any suggestions and he will go through anything uh, to make things work. So he listened to uh, Bricastia with me. He, he'll read a book that I give him. So we, we read multiple books together and then we would discuss them. And it really helped a lot. So now I get to think all these amazing thoughts about him when I want. He's a very kind person. He's a provider. He loves our kids and he always wants to work hard to provide for our kids. And he's just an amazing dad overall. And uh, there are things that I know he probably won't ever do, such as planning. I am the planner in our relationship. Everything that we want to do, if we want to go on a vacation, if we want to do any week weekend activities I have to decide what we're going to do and basically get us out the door and get us moving 
And uh, it's true for even his guys trips, his friends uh, and him, they take uh, annual guys uh, trip somewhere last year, they went to Dubai. And uh, it same applies there, his friends actually have to just give him the dates and they actually do the booking for him, they'll book his plane ticket, they'll book his hotel and everything. And he just knows that he's going actually, he doesn't even know that he's going, I have to keep reminding him that he has a trip coming up and when he has to go and I have to remind him to start packing. And even on the day off, I have to tell him by what time he needs to be at the airport by and just remind him over and over again. And that's just who he, who he is. And that's just part of him. And I have just learned to work around it so to love somebody you just have to accept them for who they are you do not have to change them because they will not change you just have to love them for who they are and this is beneficial for not only you but for the relationship and for everybody and if that's the life that you want to live if you want to be in a relationship and if you want to have a loving relationship you can have a loving a relationship filled with love right now starting right now just with your thoughts you can start thinking the happy thoughts and the good thoughts and feel the love and again the love is for you for your own well-being for your own emotional well-being for your own health this is how one of the this is one of the ways that we live a good life and i was just so amazed that you know quran has had mentioned that as well that there is love and mercy between the spouses Feeling love all the time is an amazing feeling and it's awesome to experience that. Anyways, just wanted to do a quick podcast on this and uh, inshallah, I cannot wait to take this a bit deeper with you guys and have uh, discussed some daily practices and how we can apply this on a daily basis and I'll love love to do that in the course the way I am designing it is just amazing I wish I had learned all this information like 20 years ago I wish this was all taught in school that you do not have to blame others for the way you feel you get to feel the way you want and you get to change your feeling the way you want I wish all these things and the finances and everything was taught from the very beginning and there was like a separate class for all this but of course that was not the case and but we learn from what we get from life and you struggle and you learn but this course I am confident that it will literally transform your life and i do not just say things like that so i cannot wait to have you guys in the course and i will discuss the course more on the next podcast all right bye